Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I changed my oil on my 2016 Ram 1500. This is the uh, 5.7 Hemi version, uh, so it does have a V8. Uh, I'll show you guys what I have here and uh, how we're going to do it. It's uh, actually a productive morning today. We've got a whole lamb on the rotisserie and we've got wings on the smoker. Uh, wings are going out to a buddy, he's taking it up north. Uh, and uh, lamb is for a birthday party. But uh, yeah, in today's video, let's focus on the ram right now. All right guys, what we will be needing for this process, uh, I've got some oil here. Uh, factory does recommend that we use 5W20. However, I've been using 5W30s for the life of the vehicle. If your truck is still under warranty, I'd recommend still using the 5W20. However, I'm out of warranty and I just have 5W30. Anyways, this is a great deal. This is from Costco. This is their Kirkland brand. Uh, it's full synthetic 5W30. You get two five quart bottles and I believe it's like 20 bucks if I can recall uh, really good deal It's like 20 or 25 bucks. I can't remember. But uh, anyways great deal for 10 quarts uh, for the filter we will be using a uh, Mobile one filter m1-113 a you can grab this from any of your auto parts stores order it on Amazon or you know Whatever or Walmart probably has them all right, guys. For the tools, uh, we've got my uh, 13 millimeter socket on a on a ratchet. We've got our oil pan. We've got that uh, tool right there to grab the filter. I don't know what it's called. Um, I'll probably put a link in the description down below for uh, something similar to that. But you can find that at uh, Harbor Freight or your auto store, Walmart, wherever. Fairly cheap. And then I've got myself a creeper here. Oh, I forgot to mention um, this side. Uh, this kind of job uh, tends to get messy sometimes, so I like to grab old piece of, old piece of clothing or some kind of rag uh, just to wipe your hands on. All right, and then, uh, yeah, don't wear flip-flops when you're changing oil. Also, the last tool that you will need is a uh, funnel. You don't want to make a mess when we go to pour the oil into the motor. Uh, but yeah, uh, before you use your funnel, make sure you uh, take some compressed air to it and blow all the dust out or, you know, just uh, make sure it's clean. You don't want any debris going into your motor. All right, guys, so first thing we're going to do is uh, go ahead and loosen up this uh, oil plug. Now, um, the truck is uh, still cold. Uh, you could probably, if, if it's like colder outside, um, uh, like closer to freezing temperatures, I guess you would say, uh, oil will tend to get like viscous and I'd recommend warming up the truck uh, just so the oil pours out easily. Uh, however, it's, it's about 60 or 70 degrees outside right now, so this shouldn't be too uh, thick. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and grab our 13 mil, grab it on there, put it on there, I guess, and then let's loosen it up. All right, so you do one spin, I should loosen it up. You can spin the rest by hand, but before you keep spinning that, let's grab our oil pan. Let's, let's see, let's do a better. All right, guys, so this is the tricky part. It's loose now. Let's go ahead and start loosening it up, and then keep your pressure, keep your finger on the on the actual bolt holding it in while you're loosening it up. What you want to do is you want to try to like get all the threads off as best as possible, and then make sure you're putting your oil pan in, kind of lining it up, just assuming where it will. All right. So now that I got like all the threads off, pretty much, I can or all the threads out. Just gonna go ahead and pull, boom. We got it right into the oil pan. And then our plug, I like to just wipe it off here. Uh, usually there's a magnet at the end of it uh, that grabs like any little shrapnel. Just all over time, uh, there'll be like little metal shavings and stuff. There shouldn't be too much, but just a little bit's fine. Anyways, we're gonna let that flow and then uh, we'll um, wait for that to start dripping and then we'll uh, get to the uh, oil filter. All right guys, so once it starts uh, dripping like that and it's like just uh, you know, very small uh, dripping, uh, we'll go ahead and put our plug back in. You always wanna thread by hand first, get it all the way and move the oil pan out of the way. Grab our uh, little rag here, swipe around it. I'll grab a 13 millimeter with the ratchet on a ratchet. And then we'll go ahead and tighten it. All right, just nice and snug. You don't want to strip that bolt. 
that bolt. You can strip that bolt, so don't do that. So now let's do the oil filter. And it's right there, there's the oil filter. Uh, to get to it, it'll probably be easier to reach into it from the front, and then just make sure that your oil pan is here. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, let's see if we can get a good angle for this one. Oh man. So with our tool, we'll go ahead and grab, get a good grip of the oil filter. And it's okay if you crush this oil filter with this tool because we're getting rid of it. So we're just gonna loosen it with the tool and then you should be able to thread the rest of it off by hand. All right. I'm gonna get Niagara Falls right now. Start pouring. All right, I've got the oil filter off. We're gonna keep it facing up still. Bring it over here through the front. Oh man, there you go. That's the oil filter. Just gonna leave it face down in the oil pan. And then, see what I mean? I don't know if there's a better way to doing that, but it's just, you got no choice at the angle that it's at. All right, before we start threading the oil filter, what I want to do is get some of that old oil and uh, just kind of coat the rubber gasket. This, uh, that way when we go to secure it on, it gives it, when we go to secure the oil filter on here, uh, it'll give it a nice seal. All right, guys, so I just experienced the weirdest thing, all right? Um, this is the correct oil filter for this truck. It is Mobile One um, M1-113A, um, but it didn't fit. And uh, luckily I managed to find a, another oil filter that I had laying around in the garage. It's actually a Wix brand, Wix 57060. Uh, I've got it threaded on right now. Um, we're gonna go ahead and continue this, uh, finish this up, and then I'll show you guys the difference between um, this one that didn't fit and the oil, the old oil filter that's on there, or that was on there. Um, I don't know if I ended up with a defective one or, or what, but uh, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about after we get this on. Anyways, let's continue with this. Oil filter, uh, like I said, five, Wix 57 five seven zero six zero uh what we'll do is we'll get it threaded on there and then we'll just uh spin it on we'll just we'll just spin it on until the rubber gasket um touches the uh the metal and then what you want to do is when the rubber gasket uh touches the the metal here uh you want to go ahead and try to give it uh one full turn after you do that uh and uh that should be it um if you don't have grip on your hands uh you could use a uh, your lovely rag, or you, they they make um, like a like a fit like a fitting socket almost that goes on the outside part of the uh, the filter here. That's why there's ribs uh, to for it to grab. All right, guys. So one thing I want to talk about is the used oil. You don't want to dump this in the ground or down a drain or anything like that. Um, this can be recycled at your local auto store. A lot of the local auto stores will take the oil and recycle it. Uh, in my case, I have a friend who uses a special uh, garage heater that uh, takes oil or anything with uh, burnable fuels, I guess you would say, and like burns it into like a, in a clean method or clean way. Uh, but yeah, he collects the, the oil. And so I, I fill up like these 50, or what are they called? Those, those, I think they're the 50 gallon uh, tanks and um, I just drop them off at his place and we just swap tanks and uh, yeah. But yeah, you don't want to dump this into the ground or down the drain. Uh, recycle it at your local auto store. Uh, thank you. you guys All what right. I'm talking about here. So this is our oil filter that's supposed to fit. This is a Mobile One M1-113A. Um, they always fit on the truck. However, I think I ended up with a defective one. This is the first time that it's ever happened to me. Uh, I'm a little disappointed because if I was at home and this was my only truck and I took the oil filter off and um, I'd end up having to either, you know, reuse the, 
reuse the oil filter and just you know put new oil in it and basically went to waste or i would have had to you know find a ride but uh you know fortunately i have extra cars but um yeah this is it just sucks because if i didn't have an extra oil filter i would have had to go out of my way and go grab a, uh, a new oil filter but look at the diameter for this one versus the diameter for that now i don't have a set of calipers on me handy right now but it's clear that that diameter is slightly sl smaller than this one i mean this one like i could fit my finger all the way up until like the first digit or was that the second digit this one that's about it you know it doesn't even get to the second digit so yeah uh mobile one what the heck you know that would have sucked anyways let's get to uh filling the oil here to fill the oil let's see if i can reach you can grab a little step stool yeah all right guys so stool. we've got our funnel in place um uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, grab our oil here now this truck does take uh seven quarts if you're changing the uh oil filter as well I've, i always change the oil filter whenever i'm doing oil so yep and just carefully start pouring look at that golden beauty We'll go ahead and add two more quarts, uh, and then we'll pop the cap on there, and that should be it. I'll show you guys how to reset the, the oil uh, gauge inside the truck. However, I just want to show you guys uh, on the side of these five-quart bottles, um, either on this side or this side, you will see these levels. It'll tell you, you know, the quart levels, uh, so you don't have to, you know, measure them in a measuring cup or something. You could just, uh, if you need two quarts, you just, you know, take the what, four or five quarts and uh, minus it by two and then so we'll probably be over here to have the two quarts uh all right but that's that let's go ahead and uh get the two other quarts in close up the cap and i'll show you guys how to reset the oil all right so when you go to take the funnel out i like to keep my rag handy there we go put the cap back on secure it You're good to go Go ahead and close the hood. Hold to reset. Hold on. All right, and then scroll down. Press OK to confirm. What's going on? So today's been kind of a weird day. Finally got it to work. Uh, for some reason, when I was doing the procedure, uh, I would, you know, let's see if it'll work again. All right, let's go back, hold to reset, scroll down, press okay. Uh, anyways, uh, got it to work, we're at 100%. Uh, that's how you guys change your oil and filter and reset the oil gauge on a 2016 Ram 1500. This is a Bighorn edition. It's big horn. All right. All right, guys. So that's how you change the oil and oil filter on a 2016 Ram 1500. Uh, we went ahead and reset the oil gauge. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and cruise around the block for a little bit, come back, make sure there's no leaks. And then tomorrow morning or later on today, after the truck's been sitting for a while, we'll go ahead and check the dipstick level. Uh, probably should have checked the dipstick level right after we filled up the oil, but that's okay. Uh, there's seven quarts in there. Uh, so let me know if this video helped you guys out. Um, feel free to comment down below any recommendations for uh, uh, next time when I go to do this. Um, but as usual, thank you guys for watching. Uh, go ahead and feel free to like, share, and subscribe to the channel uh, so you can stay up to date with shenanigans here at Backyard Pit Stop. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.